Okay, I'm going to begin since it is already uh, 10 30, uh, actually more. So, hello everyone. My name is Vaishali Sharma and I teach uh, public speaking and communication courses at Community College of Philadelphia. And I also work as a manager of the online learning. So, I have two hats that I wear. So, I'll talk about this course um, that I developed um, two years ago. And uh, in this course, uh, I use a synchronous session uh, when students have to do their uh, speeches. And I will talk about more um, about the course and the history, uh, how it all began, and the challenges that I have had during developing this course. And, um, and I'll touch upon pandemic and how uh, the novelty has changed now. I mean, it used to be, um, you know, one of the courses which was only using synchronous session and now um, as pandemic, um, during pandemic, everything changed and um, I'll go over that as well. So let me begin. So the things that um, when I started developing this course, the challenges that I've had, um, you know, in terms of developing is that a lot of people were resisting that uh, this will not work uh, because uh, if students do uh, speeches in the classroom, they are prepared well for the workforce. They are, you know, nervous, uh, anxious um, if they are in front of their peers. And if they do speech, can you hear me? Did somebody ha have any question? Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and continue. So, so regarding this. Um, um, the whole challenge that I had to go through that people thought it's just not going to work. Um, the the students will not have the same sense of anxiousness and nervousness since they're sitting in front of the camera. And also, uh, one of the things that when I'm teaching in the classroom, okay. um, right after I want to do audio, what do I do? Students are able to receive and uh, give instant feedback to other students um, in terms of improvement or something that they did well. And also the scheduling issue that uh, some people felt that if I have students attend the speeches at a particular time, I'm going to be taking away the flexibility that the online environment provides them. So I'm going to go ahead and um, talk about you know, how I was able to incorporate all these uh, things that people were hoping that uh, the, the course will not be able to provide. Uh, let me go forward. And now I'm going to touch upon a little bit on pandemic and how this pandemic has changed the whole environment. However, my course um, is still the same, but the whole, uh, the whole approach has changed. Uh, so teaching during the pandemic, as you all know, that um, we were told um, in March, uh, we were given two weeks Everybody who was teaching face to face were given two weeks to figure out uh, the digital skills and start teaching um, using all kinds of virtual options that are available. So some people were already using learning management system extensively or not extensively. They had to uh, figure out to move their stuff online. Um, you know, people started using Zoom or some sort of conferencing uh, tool phones, emails, chat, whatever we could come up with. And uh, now I want to show you the data. So quick data, I'm not going to spend a lot of time in the data because I only, uh, I want to talk about the course. Um, but I want to show you how things, the way they were, when I was teaching from the starting of the semester, you can see in the beginning of the January, there were like, you know, very few things going on, moving around and using synchronous session. And as soon as, soon as March 15, uh, came and this, the college decided that, okay, you know what? We are going to go all online. Nobody is going to come on campus. So now you see, I'm also in the um, online office. So we started training by March uh, 15. We started giving training on online um, synchronous or ma uh, course management, um, uh, you know, regarding those uh, areas. and. And then right away when the college opened, you see the big spike in a Zoom synchronous session. So almost like we have had uh, close to uh, above 400 sessions, close to 450. And you can see 
close to the end of the semester, the sessions gone up to 500, um, approximately close to 500 sessions. So it was, you know, the whole big change, people who were not really uh, into synchronous sessions or using technology or any of the digital skills had to make a quick move and now everybody's on board and and this you know as you can see the big shift from flat line to a whole spike and then this is as you can see towards the end it's the end of the semester so just wanna uh, let's see okay so the next slide is just giving us an overview of what were the popular days monday wednesday were popular tuesday Thursday were also okay but the surprising thing was the faculty was also using on Saturday, Sunday. All kinds of synchronous sessions were also going on on Saturday and Sunday. So how involved we were to make sure that the students finished their semester, spring semester, you know, comfortably in, in any kind of help that we could provide them. So I'm just gonna go, this is probably the last data slide uh, that I'm showing you, which is, uh, look at the minutes. The minutes have gone like almost uh, towards the end. We were using 300,000 minutes uh, in synchronous sessions. So that's like a whole uh, big cultural change in a digital environment. Um, so now I'm going to go back to my course. So I'm going to touch upon the things that I was discussing in the beginning, the challenges, the, the kinds of things that people thought that how are uh, students going to achieve that if they take the course online? So the way students provide feedback in uh, online public speaking is that they're providing in two ways. One is right after their speech. So when, once the student does the speech synchronously in front of other 25 students, uh, and all other 25 students are watching the speech with their video feed, and as soon as the speech is over, they are able to provide uh, feedback synchronously, just like they do it in the classroom. So they are given two minutes after the speech so that the student can, um, the audience student can ask a question and um, the speaker can uh, respond to the question related to the speech. And the, again, the audience can ask student, a speaker student, uh, if, uh, you know, what works in the speech, uh, what can be improved. So the instant um, response that the way they used to receive it in the classroom, they are also able to do it in the synchronous session. And the second um, way they receive the feedback is through written feedback. So one is a verbal feedback right away after the speech, and another one is a written feedback, which uh, students are divided into groups and then they are able to provide feedback to their group. So five to six students are in a group and they are supposed to take the notes while they are listening uh, to the speaker. Uh, and then uh, after the speech is over, they are given the assignment, a written assignment to write the feedback. So now at this point, either they can use their written notes uh, or they also have the option to go back to the video recording, which is also provided by Zoom system on the cloud, and they can write using the Zoom recording. But I prefer uh, I prefer students take the notes so that um, you know relying on any digital um, technology is always taking a chance. So uh, my preference is that take the notes because as as you're listening to the speaker, you're also becoming a good speaker. I mean, not only a good speaker, but good listener. So when you listen carefully, you will have questions to ask towards the end of the speech. So uh, my preference is always take notes uh, so that if the recording does not work or if you have a bad recording or something goes wrong, you will be able to do the assignment. You will not be relying heavily on the technology. You should be self-sufficient if technology works or does not work. And then I am going to um, conclude this uh, presentation with the kinds of skills that they come out learning from this course. So one of the things that students learn is also not only do uh, six synchronous speeches in the classroom, but they also learn web interview skills. So when the student is um, given an assignment to do the web interview, they are told how to project themselves, how to look at the 
uh, camera so that uh, the, the employer who is taking the interview can see that you are making a direct eye contact. The techniques that works when you are virtually giving interviews. So we go over all of that. And uh, just recently, I heard from one of my students that this, in this pandemic, she was um, she was using uh, the interview skills in the virtual environment because she was uh, asked to do uh, interview on the web. And uh, you know, in the in the past, uh, we have had a situation where we required we only asked to um, take the web interview when the, somebody could not travel in person to our office. So in that situation, um, before the pandemic, the first interview was, okay, if you cannot travel, we'll give you an option to do the web interview. But in most cases, people were able to come for the in-person interview. But during this pandemic, when people are getting hired, the tables have turned, everything is virtual. So the students are getting calls for the interview virtually. They are giving uh, first or second, all the interviews uh, on the web. At the same time, they are receiving the, uh, you know, the laptops at home and all the trainings that, ha again, happening virtually through HR or through, um, through whoever is their supervisor. So it's, it's really helping them and they're, um, they're glad that they took the course and they are able to learn all these skills ahead of time before they could actually use it. So um, now I'm going to conclude this course, I mean this presentation right here, but I'm going to show you my course and the assignments that I provide students. And right here I'm going to stop and I'm going to ask if people have questions before I start showing the course. Any question related to the course or anything else? I, I can you uh, I can't uh, tell if you can open up your mic. I don't have any questions right now. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. I am. Going well, I have to... a question. I was wondering if you could. You say you have six synchronous speeches. Uh, what what uh, what types of speeches do they do they give? Are they formatives, dem, you know, demonstrative, that kind of thing? Um, that's a very good question. Yes, I try to cover uh, mostly. Uh, different kinds of speeches, which is uh, informative, uh, demonstrative, uh, persuasive speech, in which they have to come up with some kind of a problem, um, a cause, a problem, and a solution. Um, so yeah, I try to cover six speeches, introduction, demonstration, uh, co problem, cause, solution. Uh, we also do impromptu speech, where I give student uh, the topic right away in the chat and give them two minutes to prepare. So let's say the first person gets the topic uh, two minutes ahead of the class. They they go ahead and present their impromptu speech. The next person gets getting the topic while the other person is presenting. So it's, it's very quick. So people are getting the topics in the chat. They have two minutes to prepare. They, they uh, present it right away. And that gives them a sense of like if somebody is asking them to talk impromptu and how well they can present it. So they're given a structure, uh, they're given uh, like how they should be coming up with the quick outline and how they should be presenting it. So impromptu speech is one of them. Then we also do eulogy speech. Um, if they ever had a chance and they had to speak uh, in the funeral, um, they would be able to do that. And also the farewell speech is the last one. So six speeches all together we cover synchronously and one web interview. So I hope that answers your question. Thanks, it does. Okay, great. Anything I have, else? Uh -huh. Yeah, I do have one other question. What, uh, the LMS that you're using with Zoom, uh, what LMS is it and how, how do you integrate the two? Um, the LMS we are using is Canvas system, and um, um, it's easy to, you know, I don't know how, I mean, I, I can go through this, it's more technical, all you do is the institution has done LTI incorporation, like LTI integration uh, in the Canvas system, and every instructor uh, can see the Zoom tab in their course. So. Um, I mean, two years ago when I started, uh, there was no such integration. 
I started out uh, just with my separate account because I, I was teaching this course, so I asked for the Zoom separate account. The way I'll show you my course, the way I was sharing the link, since I did not have it integrated uh, two years ago, I have an uh, individual account. I took the link and I added it into each module. And I'm going to show you how that uh, technique worked and people were not lost because at that point, the Zoom was not integrated. But now, Zoom is integrated. Uh, students and faculty member don't have to look for separate Zoom uh, option. It's right in their course. They click on the tab and then it's available easily. But I'll show you. I think it might be more clear when I uh, will be showing you. Uh, I, else? Um, I know myself and some others have typed questions in the chat board. I'm not sure if you could see that, um, but my specific question is the the interview. Are you interviewing the students? Are they interviewing each other? Is it a one on one session with you or are other students watching? Like, yes. yeah. <laughs> um, that's, a, that's a good question. So this is only the interview um, um, assignment. assignment is I'm not sure why sure. I'm here, but I will see if I can. Let me know if I'm echoing now, because sometimes it echoes, and I, I, I hope you can understand. So I'm going back to your question, which is a web interview is only assignment where students do the recording. So I provide them with questions that they can ask. And um, they can either use any family member uh, to interview them. They can use colleague, friends, or classmates. So they uh, have this set of questions, which, which are probably like 10. They're more like generic questions. So most of the time, those questions are asked in, the, in the, uh, any job environment. So uh, why are you applying for this job? Things like that. Like, tell me about yourself. The more general questions are given to them, um, approximately 10 of them, and then I give them the option to use their own uh, experience. So, they can use that, um, compose the response according to the job that they are in, or they were in the previous past job, or they're uh, thinking to apply. They can use any of those um, scenarios and ask people around them if they can interview them. And, and I provide them the way they have to sit so that their facial and their body should be very clear to me when, you know, when I'm watching all the other people are watching uh, their uh, video because students are sharing this experience with other students. So I'll show you and I have created a discussion where everybody sees each other's interview and then we I mean, then I provide the feedback later on. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to start going into my course and showing all of these answers more clearly. But yeah, the, they are doing only one of these. Um, the web interview assignment is the only assignment that they recall. And sometimes I've had students where they come up with this, like, I don't have any family member who can take interview. I don't have any friend who is available. <laughs> So what do I do? Uh, in that scenario, of course, I'm available to take their interview. Or I, or sometimes students are even creative. They use computer to ask questions, and they present as if they're uh, they're responding to a prospective employer. And it, it's it's amazing amazing how creative they can be. So I'll show you that exercise as well. Let me see if there's any other question. Um, uh, does student performance vary from in-person to virtual? You would be surprised that I have taught in-person and I have taught virtually. Um, the students who take the course online, there is not much of a difference because they are as nervous as they are because they know there are 24 other or 25 other people are watching them. So when they're presenting, the same kind of emotions goes to them. I hope they're, they're not judging me. I hope I'm doing okay. So I don't see any difference in terms of how the students are learning. Uh, and most of the time, students are given information ahead of time. 
So they, they are prepared. Um, they know how to use a webcam. Uh, sometimes people don't have access to webcam, so they can use their phone. So everybody has cell phones nowadays. So it has become easier for them to do uh, the synchronous session. Uh, generally, when um, they have these kinds of uh, situation where uh, they don't have alone, like aloofness, or they don't have a separate room where they can have you know, time to do their speeches, they actually sit in their cars and they use the phone to do their speeches. So in terms of performance, I, you know, I don't see much of a difference. Um, I was, um, you know, I will find uh, a lot of students asking for help technolo technologically. But the surprising thing is I opened the syllabus and I opened the course uh, way in advance so that they have an idea of what they are getting into. So syllabus clearly explains the lessons to register, they have access to the uh, syllabus and the kinds of things we'll be doing in the course. So they have a lot of time to decide if this is the right course for them to take. And, and it seems like so far I've had a good success and they are very appreciative of the fact that, you know, this is one of the required courses in the college and because of uh, the work schedule or uh, family situation, sometimes it's good that they are able to take uh, the course synchronously at home and not a not have to come to uh, the campus. That's that's a good thing. Playing all the time. Hi. Hi. Um, before, um, before you move on, can people who is on the telephone can they mute their telephone because there's a lot of feedback that I can't hear you. Oh, sure, I can uh, request them. Uh, if you could kindly you. mute your mics on the phone um, or on the computer. Okay, I hope it's going to make it better. So let me see another question. Do you grade on nonverbal delivery? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by nonverbal delivery, but I'm assuming you are asking in terms of their, what they're wearing, how they are um, using their body language, their eye contact, I'm assuming those things. And I absolutely have a rubric where it clearly indicates that just like your words are important, your nonverbal actions and body language is important. So yes, I do grade on all those things as well. I hope that's what you're asking. If it's something else, then let me know. Um, hi, everyone needs to have their mic. Okay, so I mics are muted. Okay, great. Any other question uh, before we move on? Oh, okay, so here's another question. Do you have them stand or sit? Well, I uh, request them to show their, they can stand, it's, it's great. If they stand, that's wonderful. But they have to show half of their body. They cannot just have the camera on their, like this little close up. They have to show at least half of the body. So I should be able to see, you know, up to their uh, tummy. So that I, I know if they're using the hand gestures and they're sitting in a proper attire, properly straight. So yes, I do require them to ha give, show me half of their body so that I can, I can see how well they are presenting in terms of half of their body. Or some people choose to stand and they feel more comfortable standing. So absolutely, they can stand. It's wonderful. If they don't want to stand and they want to sit and present, they can sit and present but they have to place their camera in such a way that I could at least see half of their uh, body in the camera, not just the tiny face. Here's another question. I am teaching online in the fall. How is your attention? Um, since uh, I have been offering this class for the last two years, it's always full. In fact, I've had a waiting list where people cannot get in. Um, so as far as retention rate, um, it's, it's been wonderful. Like I take the class, they want to stay so that they can do other things 
other things that they're busy in and take the online class. And they absolutely love it because they feel that, wow, I am, I didn't know how this course will work and I'm getting a, you know, similar experience that I, sometimes they've taken the course in person and they didn't do well. And then they took the course online and now they feel that, you know, the way the course is taught, they feel comfortable and they feel much more relaxed. And I, I feel that I, I did not have a problem with the retention. So it's been successful so far. So let me see another question. Hi, Sarah. Um, I use a makeup day for those issues. What do you do on a speech day and a student says that their technology has failed? Okay, so um, yes, that happens um, sometimes. And with technology, it happens to every one of us. Um, so when the student cannot do it and they have technology issues, then of course, you know, they can do it um, next week. But they, but it has to be genuine reason that they're not able to check their audio or uh, something is not working and connection went bad. But it cannot be this kind of issue all the time because um, in the very first class, we go over everything. How to share a screen, check your audio. The class is taking a course online. That means you have to be ready with the technology. Yes, it may happen once in a while that you have had issues. So it's okay, but um, most of the time, when students have genuine issues, it's, you can tell. As a teacher, you can, you can tell that, yes, it's okay. Uh, but mostly I've seen students are doing uh, okay. And, and when they have to make it, I make it very clear in my uh, syllabus, they can only make up one speech at the end of the semester. So if they have a reason to miss the speech, uh, they have to think, they get a chance to make only one speech. So, the, and most of the points are for speeches, so they make sure that they don't miss out. If they have a genuine reason, medical issue, somebody passed away, all of those things, you know, we do uh, make an exception for those things. But otherwise, everybody gets to make one speech at the end of the semester and no exceptions. If the technology goes bad, I can sense it and they, they cannot make full of you know, all the time, you know, because we go through everything very carefully in the first session. So that's why, I know it's, 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 though that excuse does not fly very often. And, and uh, yeah, so I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> uh, so here is another question. I use a makeup day for those issues. Okay. Well, um, they, like I said, there's only one speech they can make up at the end of the semester. And yes, there will be one makeup day. So, so students are very conscientious of this fact that uh, the speeches are the ones um, they get the most points on. So they don't miss out uh, on any, I mean, more than one speech. They try not to miss out. Could you show the LTI integration? Um, Yes, I will show the integration, uh, but the LTI, I think you need a code from the Zoom company to do the LTI integration. And uh, you can do LTI integration just for your course, or mostly um, in, the colleges do it for the whole entire uh, college. So it's, it's up to you how you wanna use it. I have used it in both ways when I did not have LTI integrated into Canvas. You could simply have an account and use the link in your course. I have used it that way as well. And it works flawlessly just the way it works with integration. Uh, but um, yeah, for the integration, you're gonna need um, your IT and uh, Zoom uh, people to exchange the course. They need to give you codes that had to be put into uh, the areas where uh, the Canvas system integrates with Zoom. So um, I'll show you how it appears when the integration happens. But at this point, I, I don't want to go into much more detail in terms of integration because it just uh, requires much more coding and the links from them to put it in the system, which at this point I, I don't have. Uh, any other question before I move on to the course? Yeah, I don't see any other question. 
So I'm going, going to please switch to a different screen. Can you all see um, Canvas on your screen? If somebody could nod their head. Yes, down. we can see the Canvas. Okay, great, great, wonderful. So, okay, so this gives you some understanding that the live sessions, um, you can have it at any time. I, I have uh, chosen the time 5.30 to 7 p.m. on Friday, so the students can still hang out with whoever they want to socialize with. So at seven, it finishes. And um, let me go into the, some of the assignments that we were discussing. So um, let's see. So as I was saying, talking about um, when I did not have LTI integration, um, I created this uh, page just for the Zoom link, and it talks about what we are going to do in the Zoom session, synchronous session, and then all they do is they click on this link and they are in the Zoom. Um, and if they are going from the phone and they're just joining the meeting, they click on this link and they can just enter this ID number. It's fairly simple, and since it's a recurring, um, you know, a synchronous sessions, I have um, created the sessions for throughout the semester. So each module will have what they will do in the in the session and how they can join. If, if your um, institution has not integrated the Zoom sessions, however, when they integrate it, it will appear, as you can see on the side of the course, the Zoom tab appears, um, and when you click on it, you can see, um, at this point, I'm not sure. okay. So at this point, I've you know all the meetings are finished because it's a spring course. So I'm going to show you um, some of the meetings that I conducted every week. The meetings are conducted, and they are listed here. So the, when students click on Zoom, if it's integrated in the Canvas system or any other system, um, the student also see the meeting links in this area. In that case, you don't have to create separate page and you don't have to provide separate link. However, I like this idea of having two things because I, I am so used to providing this uh, uh, page, which also gives them a little bit of information about what we'll be doing in the session, not just the link to get in. So I, I just give them all, all the options. They can go through the page, they can go through the Zoom um, directly, and be in the meeting. So this is how you can do LTI and also um, if you're not LTI, yeah, you don't have it. So now let me go to uh, one of the assignments that we were discussing was a web interview assignment. And that is, okay, here. So I have divided this into two parts um, and I'll show you both the parts. So this is a written part where students are given these questions, where they respond to these questions and, and they submit them in the Canvas system. And then I also give them feedback as to, you know, how they can uh, have a, a better response or something that will be more persuasive. So this is more like a written part. And then we go to, um, and we, go to the recording part, which is, so I provide them with instructions how they can upload it, and and the way they should place their camera. So they can have two spe uh, people side to side. Uh, one person can be asking questions, another can be responding, and or some people say, oh, you know what, my family member does not want to be in the camera. So they can have, the, the person who's asking the question can have their back towards the camera, but the person I am looking at their response and their facial expressions, so they they always have to be nicely lit, uh, so I can see them how they're responding, or they can have it uh, in 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 a formal setting like this as well. Like they their facial half body should always be clearly visible, 
so that we can, I mean, I can respond. And, and this is how students seem to share this. This is the only assignment that they do recording. Otherwise, all other six speeches that we do, we do it in a synchronous session, a synchronous um, way. Um, let me think. What, what? Any other question that I'm missing? Please let me know. So uh, this is how it is all set up. I am uh, giving them template for the outline to write, and then uh, this is the uh, this is the written version of their assignment that they have to do, and their rubric is provided. As somebody was saying, uh, whether I am grading them on the nonverbal um, things. So yes, I am grading them on nonverbal things, which is voice, gesture, eye contact, mannerism, um, you know, things like that. So yes. So please let me know if there's anything I'm missing. Quick question. Uh -huh. I know you said for the um, for the web, the interview, that it's stomach up. Is that also a requirement for the synchronous speeches that you want to see more than just their heads? <laughs> Yes, yes, absolutely. Every synchronous speech that they do, they have to place their uh, device or computer in such a way that they, half of their body should be visible. If they don't, then I point in the beginning before they even start the speech, like, oh, could you uh, fix your device so that we can see half of your body? So yes, it's, it's something that, it helps me and it helps them to prepare better because they are not lying in their couch or on a bed. They should be sitting professionally um, or stand if they prefer. Um, yeah, it's more like formal speaking, not just, you know, just lying in the bed and giving the speeches. That's not, uh, yeah, that's not what uh, I'm expecting, Hope, hoping that they learn professional way of speaking, <laughs> even if it's in front of the camera. So any, any other question? And another good thing about um, uh, the, the synchronous session is that students can all see each other. One of the reason we, I, I chose the Zoom is because most of the systems were um, not able to handle 30 or 35 students or uh, 20, uh, like I, I, we have a ratio in English classes that say 26, uh, 25 to 26. So can this, can this um, system handle the, that many video uh, feeds? And, and Zoom is able to handle it. So that's why one of the reason I picked Zoom because the system don't crash because I've had other um, system that I've used in the past that that did not work um, when you're doing a synchronous session. But with Zoom, I, I did not have that problem. Anything else um, you want to talk about? Do you want to share your um, experiences in your course? Is anybody teaching online public speaking? I think you have to unmute your uh, mics if you want to share your experience. There's a couple questions on the chat board. Okay, um, yeah, let me get out of here. Okay, I think I have to... I'm trying to get to the chat, just uh, give me one second. I... Because the chat thing is not appearing, let me see where... Um, okay, I'm going to stop sharing then. I, I'm sure I, it, yes, I can see now. So let's see. Um, do students have any issues with being required to be present at a certain time for an online course? So regarding this question, as um, I may have mentioned in, this, in my um, presentation, that I open the course ahead of time. As soon as the registration starts, I let them see that uh, this requirement is important. It is mandatory for them to be in the session. And as long as they know that, um, you know, they are okay because they cannot say, oh, you didn't tell me and now I'm in a situation where I cannot switch the course. So they are uh, 
you know, the course is open for them ahead of time. Uh, this, the, I constantly also send them notifications that you are registered for this course and uh, be aware that there is going to be synchronous session from on this day and, and this time. So if you have uh, opportunity, if you want to switch, you still can do it in any other course, but uh, this course requires this time uh, for synchronous session. Uh, here's another question. Do you have requirement for the audience having all cameras on? Um, requiring for the audience, um, I generally ask students, I don't require it, but I ask them to open up their cameras, especially um, because I, I want to make sure they're not, they're paying attention. And, and that's why I ask them to open up their camera. But in most cases they do, but if, if they can't, I understand. Um, but most cases, when you tell students that, uh, please kindly leave your cameras on so I am aware that you're watching it, you're listening to the speech, um, they do open it. Of course, once in a while, you'll see some students close it uh, and then they open back up. So yeah, it's, it's not really a requirement. It's, it's kind of like just making sure that they're there and making, you know, paying attention to the speeches. And another thing I keep uh, telling them that please take notes during the speech uh, speech when your group member is doing the speech because you know again sometimes the recordings when the zoom do the recording there are so many variables that goes in the recording and sometimes the recording is not clear uh, and the uh, and sometimes you don't see the facial expression uh, the way you want to see sometimes it, it turns into this ghostly figure that you can't really see any uh, real expression so it's very important that, especially if their group is doing the presentation, they listen to it and make notes so that they don't rely on the video so heavily, which may not turn out to be a good video. So it's, it's I reiterate again and again, please take the notes while your group member is speaking so that um, you, know, you are able to not rely on the uh, video recording. Um, However, I know some students do go to video recordings and then there are situations where they say, oh, video recording is not working and what do I do? And then at that point, I have to tell them, remember I have told you not to rely on the technology, always take your notes and always keep it with you. And of course, you, know, you always bump into those situations. Uh, so here's another question. Hi, Lori, at our institution, we have a hybrid designation that provides students with uh, um, I think your question is cut off. Let me see if I can. Um, hybrid designation. I'm not sure. Um, I, I think the question is has not come in completely. So um, at this point, we do have some hybrid courses, but they are not offered. Um, they were not offered through synchronous way. They were offered more like in the classroom. So partially the material was available online, but then, uh, but the students were coming in, in on campus uh, on certain dates um, and they were doing the speeches. So yes, we, we experimented that as well and we had those courses, uh, but this was more, this, this was completely online. There is, um, but again, I, I have realized the institution decides what they would call hybrid. So depending on your institution, I'm not sure how you are considering hybrid. Lori, if you want to complete your question, I'll be happy to understand more. Um, any other thing that uh, you have, let me know. Or you can share your experience. Hi, my name is Katie Carnival. I teach this class asynchronously, and I just wanted to share something that I do. It's, it's fully online and it's asynchronous. And what I did over the past couple of semesters before the COVID crisis was I um, reserved a room at my local library and any students who had trouble assembling an audience for their speech were able to sign up to come to this day, this agreed upon day and time at my local library and we used one of the study rooms for students to do the speeches. So those who had trouble gathering an audience, uh, you know, had another alternative. So I just wanted to share that. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. 
Um, Rebecca this one... had a question. Yeah. Rebecca has a question in the chat about how COVID affected uh, students who may have only had access to tech on campus. And I just wanted to tell Rebecca, um, all my face-to-face -face effective speaking classes that went to using Zoom, I provided students with information how to download Zoom using their mobile um, their mobile device, so they can gain access through Zoom using their their smartphone. So that's how I minimized uh, the tech issues. If they didn't have a computer at home, they were able to download Zoom using their phone. Yeah, that's that's great. Sorry about uh, the question, Rebecca. I, it was uh, I guess it was uh, under hidden underneath the the area that I I didn't see. But I yes, I totally agree. As um, um, I forgot your name. I'm sorry, I didn't pay attention. But uh, yes, I agree with the uh, uh, instructor who just said uh, we we are using Zoom. However, uh, because this course was already uh, synchronous. Um, Students did not have any problem. In fact, for the summer, um, all the face-to-face -face courses um, have taken the template of this course, and they are now uh, using it for the summer um, uh, summer classes. It it became kind of like a, a template to use for for a synchronous public speaking course. So it turned out to be. I was hoping that this this whole uh, you know, synchronous sessions and all these remote virtual digital skills is going to take slowly uh, in future, but pandemic has pushed us to use all these things instantly. And, you know, as, as need uh, becomes um, necessity. So yes, and everybody dealt with the chaos and trying to use Zoom uh, for in-person um, uh, sessions or in-person help that they could provide to students. Any other question, Rebecca? I don't know if I answered your question, but I'm. Yes, it was it was partial. I guess um, the other part of that is, and it could be open to anybody in this session, is did nobody have students who didn't have cell phones or who didn't have um that type of internet access that they could switch and if so then what would that look like did they get it incomplete did it are we just going to roll those students into future semesters because one of the schools i teach at the poverty level and the lack of even having a smartphone you know uh, yes, um, some of our students have had issues like that, and um, uh, so the college has provided. Uh, there was this, uh, I remember free, Comcast was providing free internet connection to the students who have had concerns like that. So uh, we, you know, they had to fill out this small form, and they were able to get the internet uh, depending on, um, on the information that they're providing. Uh, I think it's primarily... Uh, the income based in um, and uh, some people didn't have devices as you're you're saying uh, yes um, that situation did arise and uh, the college has stepped up and helped in some ways um, yeah uh, however most of the students were if they didn't have the computer at home they were relying on their phones and and in this situation, uh, we were, you know, the faculty were being just compassionate and just trying to help them in an, every or any possible way through phone, through email, and understanding if if they cannot join. Uh, but luckily, uh, since my course was set up in such a way that, you know, if they didn't have such uh, things, they didn't take the course. So I did not have to face that situation because they already. Um, knew what to expect from this course. We were already in the middle of the semester when the crisis hit us. So um, my course was okay. We, we, I mean, I did not have to face that, but, but I do know what you're saying and other instructors did come up with these issues and uh, yeah, the college tried to help them in some ways. Okay, any other question? Uh, so far, so good. H how is summer course is going for everybody? Uh, is everybody doing okay in terms of technology? Uh, 
using synchronous sessions. Anything else you want to see in the course, let me know. I would be happy to show you. Um, one of the things that I want to um, point out uh, regarding the speeches that we do in the class, uh, most of the students get so um, worried about those speeches because they don't get a chance to prepare it in advance. And, and it just uh, uh, makes them very nervous that they will be given the topic instantly and they would have to come up with this short, brief speech. Uh, but they, they really enjoy this exercise and uh, and later after the uh, assignment is over there they say okay well this was a good one and um, I was just worried about for no reason so yeah it, it helps them um, do that exercise so if you want to try that get, have a list of topics available ahead of time um, let them know that you're going to be giving them the topic instantly and it's it's a lot of fun for them and for for the teacher as well. So if you want to try that exercise, that should be fun. I think we have ten more minutes. If anybody wants to share something, and uh, are people also using um, the um, OER material in their course? Because that's another thing um, some faculty, uh, some um, student appreciate that they don't have to buy the book in, in my course because I'm using um, the open resource textbook, which helps them. Anything you want to uh, bring into uh, this group's attention? I, let me check the chat. I think I'm okay. So in chat, we are up to date. We don't have any questions. Um, I use the textbook, uh, which is let me just. Uh, it's a public speaking. Let me see. Hang on. I think I'm, I'm probably going to look into more books uh, this summer. But so far, oh, one second. So far, I'm using uh, uh, this textbook, Public Speaking Project, but I am looking into other options as well to see if I can change it. Um, you know, this book has very limited resources, so most of the videos and things like that, I have to make it on my own. So you will see in the course that uh, um, I created my own uh, short video lectures related to the book. Um, but the, uh, but the content is good, except the fact that just like publishers uh, give you a lot of material, in OER, sometimes you don't find um, a lot of material. So you, you kind of create your own short lectures um, or provide different resources so that students are not going to miss out just because they, you are not using expensive book. I created my own lectures. I provide them with um, different video resources that they also get in the um, in the publisher um, textbook. Uh, but yeah, in this summer, I'm trying to see if I can find something else as well. But remember, OER um, is a good way, especially for as as one of the instructors is suggesting that. Some students cannot afford the books or yeah, want to find other resources. So I have had used publishers' books in the past, and they were uh, none of them were less than 65 um, or at least $50. So I, I found this book, which has a content that is uh, good, except the fact that it does not have a lot of um, resources, like I was saying, a lot of uh, short videos or other things. It just have basic uh, textbook information. So, so yeah. Okay. Um. Let's see where did it go. Did Did you see uh, the book I was showing you? Did you see the screen or no? I would let. 
No, okay, so let me just quickly go. I thought I was showing this book, but you know, sometimes I know it's to confirm it whether uh, you see it or not. So let me go back. So I was showing you, if you type in the public speaking project, that's the virtual textbook I'm using. And it does provide some PowerPoints, it does provide some, some materials, some quizzes, but it does not provide a whole lot of material that publisher provides. So in, in that case, um, yeah, I, I end up creating uh, myself. But it's, it's a good way to save money for our students. I always look for uh, open resources so that you know, students don't have to spend extra money um, to take the course. So at least as long as they have the phone and they have the computer, they are good to go. They don't need to buy the book. So they are very pleased about that. Um, Erin, let me see if anything else. A lot of interactive exercises face to face to help them get comfortable with each other. Um, can you describe what kinds of interactive exercises? Uh, um, I see Kina Brew has asked me interactive exercises, storytelling. Okay. Um, well, in terms of storytelling, when I give them these exercises, um, we do, um, mostly we do these, um, what should I say, uh, group um, feedbacks. Yes, uh, they uh, look at each other's speeches, they provide uh, the feedback in the group. So those are the kinds of things. And in more, more interactive stuff we are doing in the synchronous session. Yes, absolutely, um, I use uh, Kahoot um, in terms of I play Kahoot on um, in the in the synchronous session I present the questions related to the questions or in general like common sense questions and ask them to use their phone to respond to the question and see you know if if they're reading the chapters or if they are understanding the material. So I try to kind of play with them, interact in, in a way that, yes, absolutely, listening exercises to see if they were paying attention to, sometimes when I do the synchronous session, uh, lecture uh, session, uh, and after that, um, I try to see how people are paying attention, and then that kind of gives you an idea that whether they were listening or um, who is listening, and, you know, the kind of, they are understanding the material. So yes, um, small exercises I try to do, but I don't uh, heavily grade them on those exercises. It's more um, interactive to see how they're, you know, what they're learning, if they're learning at all. Um, but the uh, grades primarily are, you know, um, have heavily focused on the speeches and the feedbacks and the um, uh, writing of the speeches, like outlines. Um, but yeah, uh, I do try to have some interaction in the synchronous sessions. Vocal and nonverbal activities. Um, um, let me think. I have not uh, done vocal and nonverbal activities. I mean, we. In terms of vocal, we we do yeah emphasize only on the I mean on the speeches in terms of um, or in my lectures I try to convey uh, how emphasizing on something important works or not. But I haven't uh, done any activity. I can certainly if you want to share something, I would be happy to uh, yeah I would be happy to share in my class. Um, it's something, yeah, I have not tested it. I have not tried it. Um, Kinabru, if you want to talk about it, uh, what do you do in your vocal and nonverbal activity? That would be great. If not, then um, I know our time is up. It's already 11.31. If you, 
No problem. That's good. Uh, some people are have to go. It's already 1130. Uh, my, here's my email address. If anybody wants to share um, or ask me any question, I would be happy to uh, respond to you. Here, here's my email address. But thank you all for joining. And I appreciate you giving your time to me today. Thank you.